Next, we're going to talk about PANLUC, or the distemper caused by a feline parvovirus. How many of you actually know anything about parvo, even if it's in dogs? Okay. Parvo, basically what it does is it gets into the lining of intestines, into bone marrow, into anything that's rapidly dividing. So in kittens and puppies, that's pretty much their entire body. And it just wipes them out. It destroys cells. The thing about parvovirus is it's everywhere. You can bring it home on your shoes. You can bring feline parvovirus home. You walk into a vet hospital. You walk into a pet store. You run the risk of bringing this home. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. And so the big thing about this is it's shed in the urine. It's shed in the stool. It's shed in nasal secretions. So it's out there. It's very easy to bring home. The one good thing about this is cats don't tend to shed for very long. They're only shedding for one to two days um, as they get sick. How, whereas with dogs, it's more of a six to ten week thing where they still continue to shed it in their feces. Cats don't tend to shed it near as long as dogs do, and that's one of the big differences between them. Again, this is a kitten disease. Not that adult cats can't get it, but it's a big kitten disease. Three to five months of age, especially if you're not vaccinating appropriately. Mom's, mom's immunity really starts to worn <laughs> off around 10 weeks of age, but it can last up to 12, 14, 16 weeks, depending on how much immunity they really got. So at that three-month mark, we're hitting that 12-week mark. If they haven't gotten their first vaccine yet, or if they got their first vaccine at eight weeks, and mom's immunity ran out at 10 weeks, and you brought it home at 11 weeks, they're sick with PanLuke at 12 weeks. And this is why it's so important to do this vaccine every three. I like every three weeks. This is one I don't, I don't like to mess around with. I've seen a kitten get this, and it's horrible. It is horrible. You can, and especially since you can just bring it home, and it can be very inadvertent. It's not because you have a poor husbandry situation. This is totally different than that. The reason kittens are so susceptible, like I said, it gets in their bone marrow, it gets in their intestines, it's rapidly dividing, the, the virus replicates so fastly. The other thing about this, in the developing fetus, if an adult cat gets it when she's pregnant, it's gonna affect those kittens. And it can also affect those newborn kittens in the first two weeks um, because the brains are developing so fast. What does it look like in the kitten, in the three to five month old, three to year old kitten? What does it look like? It looks like everything else. Decreased appetite, high fever, or very low body temperature, depending on where they are in the disease. Vomiting, depression, they'll drool. These kittens may not vomit at all, but they will just have shoestrings coming from their mouth because they are so nauseous. I mean, just shoestrings. And they may not be vomiting. They may just be regurging where they don't even get the water down. They're sitting by the water dish because they want to drink, but they're so nauseated, but they're so dehydrated. They want to drink, so they will just sit at the water dish and drool. It's very sad. They may or may not have nasal discharge. And these kittens may have severe dehydration without any vomiting or diarrhea yet because it's all flooding into their gut, but they haven't started having any vomiting or any diarrhea, but they're getting extremely dehydrated. They may even be drinking water and be getting dehydrated and you don't understand why. Panlink may be what's going on here. The big thing about the pregnant females that I kind of hit on just a little bit, if they get infected towards the end of their pregnancy or when the kittens are first born, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the dizzy kittens where they have trouble walking and they shake a little bit. They're pretty normal but they can't really walk right. They stumble. I wanted to have a video for this, but I couldn't, get, I couldn't get it to work with my presentation. But it's that dizzy, shaking, unstable kitten that once they start to walk around and do stuff, you're like, what is wrong with this kitten? They, got, they have what we call cerebellar hypoplasia because the cerebellum doesn't develop properly because the parvovirus attacked it because somebody was infected with panleukopenia <coughs> during that pregnancy, which, good you didn't lose the kitten, but it's not a kitten you can sell. You know, most, unless you have an owner that is really, which you probably wouldn't sell it, but if you have an owner that's going to take good care of them, they can live a decent life, but they are very dizzy and unstable and can hurt themselves pretty easy because they don't do very well jumping. It's pretty e This is a very easy, unlike the Khaleesi virus, PanLuke is so easy to diagnose. One of the first things you're going to, that the vet will probably do, 
he may want to do they may want to do full blood work but on the CBC on your complete blood count your red cell line your white cell line are going to be really low partly because it's affecting the bone marrow but you can the easiest thing that you can do because some of these kittens are so dehydrated you're not going to get any blood but if you're not sure what it is and you do have a blood and you see this this better be the next thing you're doing the canine um, parvo snap test works great in kittens which is wonderful because there's so much cross-reactivity between the canine parvovirus and the feline parvovirus. That SNAP test, if you, and all you have to do is just do a little rectal on the kittens and then, so you'll have the fecal matter in there and then you can run that SNAP test and within, usually if it's pan loop within two minutes you're gonna know because it comes up that fast. And there is, they did do a study where if they've been vaccinated, does it interact with it? Some of them, yes. This one, not near as much as some of the other ones. The IDEX SNAP test, it doesn't interact with the vaccine near as much as some of the other SNAP tests that are out there. But if that comes up positive, your kitten has panleukopenia, and every kitten you have in your cattery is at risk for developing panleuk because vaccinated or not vaccinated, between that nine-week mark to that 16-week mark, when are they gonna drop their immunity? You don't know. And every kitten in the litter might be a little bit different. So you just have to hope that you've got them vaccinated. The kitten I had that came into, I actually was treating a kitten that just was sick and I had it in with the litter of kittens on the slide before with the two kittens and the mom that were sitting together. I didn't know it was pan Luke until after it had been around those guys. And those kittens were 11 weeks old. I had just given them a modified live vaccine at 10 weeks. Thank goodness or I would have lost every single one of those kittens. And I was terrified because after they've been exposed to it, they're gonna get it within five to seven days. And so when that 10 day mark came around and they were still fine, I was just glad that I had given them a modified live vaccine at 10 weeks of age. And one study they've shown, because I was pulling out all sorts of research, I'm like, oh, please tell me they're gonna be okay. And they did, I didn't lose a single one of those kittens and they were only 10 weeks old, exposed to a six month old pan loop kitten that I brought home to take care of. And unfortunately, was a bad situation. Again, anybody that's showing any signs of illness, get them in a different room. Get them in a different, if you have even a different building or something, you know, some people have buildings to separate them. Somebody, some people have different properties that they can, if they work with somebody else, that they can move the cats away from the queens and the kittens. If you have a confirmed case, again, I talk about the porous dishes, meaning if you're not using stainless steel, I recommend you switch over to stainless steel. If you have dishes in there that are plastic, ceramic, the virus can get down into those and you cannot get rid of it. So you need to get rid of those dishes. If you have stainless steel, bleach them. Litter boxes, throw them away and get new ones. If you have a pan loop case in that area, your clothes, if you're dealing with one of these pan loop cats, you need to have it isolated. You need to have clothes that you're only using in that room. And I recommend having, what I had was a little towel right outside the door with a dilute bleach on it so that I was stepping on it as I was going in and out of the room. Because once I found out that that's what it was, I moved it obviously. But you want to, that way you're getting the virus off of your feet as you're going in and out and not having to worry about then taking it everywhere. So that's something that you could do. <coughs> if you have cats that are not vaccinated, you want to get them as far away from this situation as possible. You do not want them in this situation because it's highly contagious and it is easy for them to get and it can wipe them out so fast. Again, parvo, very resistant <coughs> to extreme temperatures. It can live in the environment for weeks. And a lot of the disinfectants that are out there that you may already be using aren't effective for it. Some veterinary hospitals have some things available that maybe you can talk to them about. ParvoGuard is one that is available that will kill parvovirus. It is, you probably can get it online and it works really good against the parvovirus and then you're not dealing with some of the bleach. The other thing that is very important, if there's any fecal material there that is not cleaned up prior to disinfecting, you're not killing the virus. And that's a huge thing. You need to make sure you clean very well, get rid of that fecal material, and then use your dilute bleach and let it have contact for 30 minutes or the other disinfectant that you have. It needs to have contact for 30 minutes. So you don't want to be drying it and wiping them down. You need to be doing it and then just leaving it sit there so that it can have contact time and kill that virus. This vaccine, some of the studies that are out there, 
Again, <laughs> modified live, unless, unless it's a kitten or a female cat that are kitten under four weeks old or a female cat. You don't want to use modified live in them because then you're going to get the dizzy kittens because it's going to affect their brain. The one study they did, Eclipse 3, is a modified live vaccine. It provided 100% protection in every kitten that it was given to within 14 days of the vaccine. So if you're having an outbreak, that's the vaccine I'm using. If you're having an outbreak, the intranasal vaccines only gave 75% protection at, with, at that two-week mark after they, it's been given. Yeah, it's modified live, and it will protect them, but at two weeks, you're only getting about a 75% protection rate. And the inactivated vaccines, the killed vaccines, you're only getting 38% of those guys that are going to help. And so this is another reason not to use a killed vaccine for Pianluc. You're only getting about 38% of your kitties are going to be protected from the feline parvovirus. So mm -hmm. they used other modified lives other than just the Eclipse 3, but the Eclipse 3 gave 100% protection on every single one of those kittens by two weeks of age. We talked about the kittens that are less than four weeks of age. Don't use the modified live. It's going to make them dizzy. Don't use modified live in any pregnant queen. If, you're getting, if you have a new queen come in and you are unsure of her vaccine schedule, you do not have proof in front of you, if, if you're not sure, you need to be given a killed vaccine to those kittens at four weeks. And then at, at seven to eight weeks, every three weeks, the modified live of Panluc. You guys have, we have the biggest chance of bringing the feline parvovirus into our, because of how much we're associating with other people with cats. And sometimes they're not vaccinated as well. Some people don't believe in vaccines, so they're not giving the vaccines. They're the ones that are probably going to be bringing this out for you to get. If you know the queen has been really well vaccinated, they don't need that first vaccine until they're eight to nine weeks of age because they're going to have good immunity for mom. And then you can just start with the modified life. But this is the only time that I will tell you to use a killed vaccine in your cats is if you're not sure what that queen had, you need to get some protection into those kittens, especially if you're having an outbreak in it. Questions about the feline parvovirus? These are my kids. <laughs> <laughs> They're not stressed. <laughs> well, they look awful stressed. <laughs> Aren't they, though? <laughs> yeah. How do you wean them like that? <laughs> I don't know. They just they just like to curl up and be warm. <laughs> Any, you guys all comfortable then with the pan loop? With pan loop, that's a death sentence. I would say about 75 to 80% of the time. The kitten that I had, I gave plasma to. She was on fluids. We got to day. If you get past day five, they say that you're good. This kitten died at six and a half days of treatment. And she had plasma to help boost the immune system. She was on, it's a very expensive disease to treat if you're not a veterinarian. I'm talking $2,000, and you're still probably going to lose the kitten. I threw everything I had at this kitten, and I lost the kitten. So it's, you know, it was a kitten that had been vaccinated with the intranasal vaccine. Hmm. So just, I'm, I'm not skeptical of the intranasal for respiratory, but when it comes to Panluc, and I got a kitten that had pan, that developed Panluc, and so that's a huge scare. She'd had the intranasal vaccine, she'd been vaccinated like she needed to be. Unfortunately, it didn't protect her when she needed the protection. 